Hello, this is Coach Tim Campbell, and I'm your host for the Self Made as a Myth Make a Difference Together show, where we are chatting with successful business owners to hear their stories of the journey to building their business. And because we know that uh, building a successful business is not something that we can do on our own, we're taking some time to recognize the folks who have helped us along the way. Today, I am excited to have a fellow business owner from Indiana with us. My guest once helped harvest olives in Sicily. That's pretty cool. We're going to ask him <laughs> a little bit more about that. In his downtime, he enjoys uh, creative writing as well as long mountain hikes, and he's most proud of his kids. He has uh, five kids and six grandkids. Congratulations. That's right. awesome. Thanks, yeah, Tim. it is my pleasure to welcome David to the show today. Hello, David. Hello, Tim. Good to be here. Awesome. Hey, let's start with having you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit of your personal story, like where you were born and live and about your family and hobbies. Yeah, sure, sure. So, uh, yeah, uh, born here in Indiana, uh, lived here most of my life uh, around the Anderson area is where I grew up, um, worked in Indianapolis most of my career, a uh, little bit outside, a little bit in Ohio, a little bit in Detroit. Uh, mostly I've been in talent acquisition, uh, leadership uh, on the corporate side, and some uh, some staffing work as well along the way. And you know, just uh, past a uh, few years, uh, started uh, started consulting, and then that uh, led into um, starting a company. And so, um, most most of my career has been in technology, um, software cybersecurity, uh, those types of industries, uh, but a uh, little bit of everything. So, uh, but, but a lot of, a lot of, uh, high tech. Fantastic. Tell us a little bit about your family. Yeah. So, uh, five kids, as, as you, you mentioned, uh, we, uh, uh, my wife, uh, when we, we got married, she was the youngest of five. So that was her paradigm. Right. <laughs> and, uh, I was like, uh, well, I just, this is my sister and myself. So, <laughs> okay. So I got on board. Uh, we we uh, we have a wonderful family. Uh, so my wife and I have been married for 31 years. Oh, congratulations! We celebrated our anniversary. Uh, did a 30th anniversary la trip to Paris last year, mm. and uh, spent spent some time in France for about a month, and and uh, toured around there, and and uh, worked from there remotely for a little while. Uh -huh. So yeah, good for you. Uh, that was that was awesome. Um, Tell us about but, the yeah. olives. Oh, uh, so that was a trip uh, about. 12 years before uh and you know I'd always wanted to go to Italy when it, there's there's so much of of Europe I want to see uh but I'm not I'm not really good being your typical tourist you know jumping <laughs> on the bus and following the crowds and things like that I want to get immersed in the in the language and the culture um studied Italian in in uh school at IU and and uh just yeah, well, I always wanted to go. And so I was at that time, I was running just a hobby farm, you know, like I had, uh, it was just, you know, part time spare time weekends uh, with my kids, and we would go to farmers markets, we we had some subscriptions as a as a CSA community supported agriculture. And, um, and I've always kind of had this entrepreneurial, you know, mindset or, or uh, uh, lean uh, with, with myself, but I, I found this organization in Europe that does, um, organic farming and then they, uh, you can go and, and exchange work hours for room, room and board. So it was a great way for us to kind of get immersed and oh, wow. you know, stay cheap and stay a little bit longer. So we were there for close to about three, three weeks. And uh, uh, they worked us like dogs. <laughs> it was one of these things where uh, they were way behind schedule, and they were in <laughs> and we were like, "Okay, we'll we'll help." And we were only planning to work like four or six hours a day, and then you know have the rest of the time, yeah, to tour the countryside and things. But no, it was it was sun up to sundown <laughs> for about ten days straight <laughs> in mud and. It was it was awesome though. What, what, a, what a great experience! I love that. And we yeah. it worked just like a dog. It was muddy and horrible conditions. And you also said it was awesome. It was it was awesome. <laughs> yeah, because we I mean the stories that come out of that right and uh, you know the food and the culture and uh, yeah I could I could share some really really funny stories um, <clears throat> uh, with with just just being there in central Sicily you know where. 
uh, we were we stuck out like outsiders like you know sure, you, right <laughs> very suspect of us right uh <laughs> you but, know is this a new boss in town what's yeah, going on yeah, right? yeah. Well, so, speaking yeah, of funny yeah. story is there a a story that your family likes to tell about you that you'd be willing to share with us today oh my gosh well it's related to that i don't know this is really embarrassing but it's it's one of those stories I, I like to laugh at myself. So right. So and my family does too at my expense. <laughs> um when we were there, gosh, I don't know if I tell this one or not, but <laughs> oh, it's too late now. You've already opened too late, up. right? I know, I know. <laughs> Man, Tim. Okay. So here it goes. Um <clears throat> we were harvesting olives. And, you know, we like I said, we we uh when you're in central Sicily, you're working on a on a farm, things are pretty very primitive mm. um no laundry you know we we did our laundry in a bucket uh -huh. you know, basically right and we were working basically sun up to sun down and you know they fed us they fed us well just you know gracious hosts they were wonderful people and um and we still keep in touch today we it was uh in the fall so olives are harvested around october um you know, late October, mid to late October, early November. And um, <clears throat> this was, they had a just a beautiful farm and we were, uh, it was Halloween. So, and that's, uh, I'm not Catholic, but that's a big, you know, that's a, a kind of a, a, a big mass, you know, Hallow's Eve mass. And so we wanted to go. The family was going, they said, hey, let's let's get in from the field. We're kind of in a hurry. We're in a rush, but let's go. Um, and we were like, yeah, we want to, we want to be a part of this. So uh, we didn't have any like clean clothes really, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and so I'm throwing stuff together. I, I'm out of, I'm out of, you know, undergarments. Right. <laughs> and and uh, so I just threw on some jeans and went and, we go to mass and it's standing room only and um, people are walking in and I'm like, Hey, um, I, I, I left my wife and uh, our hosts. Uh, those two ladies go up, you know, front and have the experience. And I was just like, I'll just stay in the back. So I'm standing in the back and um, one of the nuns comes in and, and, and uh, she looks at me standing in the back and she signals to me. And I'm like, I don't know what she's saying. Oh, no, no. You know where I'm going with this. Don't you? <laughs> so I go outside and I'm just like, well, I'm just, you know, this is, I, I don't know what she's saying, but I'm just going to go outside because there's nowhere to sit. And it's, I'm like this, right? <laughs> so I go outside and this beautiful just evening and, you know, I'm sitting in the plaza and this, this wind comes in off the mountains and just like, <laughs> it's cold and it hits me, you know? hits me right, you know, where it counts. And I'm like, I look down and I'm wide up. I'm, I'm like, <laughs> barn doors open. So, um, very uh, embarrassing. That, that, right? may be, uh, that may be uh, one of the best uh, funny stories I've heard. So you're, you're going to, oh you're in the, you're in the running for the award. <laughs> well, the family just, we told it at dinner that evening afterward and uh, the family just about fell off the, off the chairs. <laughs> So, oh, thank you for uh, sharing. Hey, David. So I flash. So basically, Tim, what the 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 punchline of that story is uh -huh. is that I flashed a nun. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Claim uh, to fame. Only I'm not only welcome in back Sicily, in Sicily. Right? I don't think. Yeah, I can't go back there. I have to go to another part of Italy. <laughs> so, David, tell us how did business come about, and at what point did you have the confidence that you could run your own business? Yeah, you know, confidence is a great word because for a lot of years, I, I, you know, kind of thought I wanted to do this. I wanted to do something on my own. But it's a, uh, it's, you know, that's one of the things that um, I've, I've probably learned over the course of many years and continue to learn. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I, I came to a point. That, so there, I remember one conversation that I had with someone that I, I respected, that I, I helped uh, hire to the organization I was with at the time. She was a, an executive leader for quality and had helped her hire a lot of people. And she said to me one day, she said, you know, you really ought to think about consulting. You could mm. you you do this really well. I think you could do that really well on your own. 
And that kind of planted the seed, you know, for years later, <clears throat> when the organization changed, we were bought, I wasn't having much fun. I left, made a bad choice with, with going to another company, mm. didn't work out. And then that started the journey, right, with, with consulting. Yeah. Um, and then as I was consulting, I determined that, like, I don't, I'm going to be pretty limited if I'm billing my own hours. Right. Yeah. Know? Right. So I only have so much time and, um, and there's more that we can contribute, mm -hmm. you know, and I wanted to systematize what we were doing. So that led eventually to field of talent. And so that's, uh, well, I started uh, field of talent. I consulted for a number of years with another partner uh, for a little while, and then um, started field of talent in 2021. Awesome. Well, let tell us a little bit more about Field of Talent. What do you guys do? How do you help people? Yeah. So what we do is is recruitment as a service, basically, or RPO, recruitment process outsourcing. Mm -hmm. So our approach to recruiting, um, when I started, I never really wanted to have a traditional um, headhunting, you know, agency. Um, I, I I think that's that's a great model, and it, and it's contingency or retained search works for a lot of companies and works for a lot of firms. Uh, just wasn't my style. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to take uh, the, really the white glove service and and the uh, the guidance and the coaching of um, hiring managers and companies and candidates through the process and be able to um, provide that as a service as an ongoing subscription service. Mm -hmm. And so we've taken largely uh, uh we we work with a lot of companies that are startups or scale ups that uh have you know funding they're ready to grow they have some pressure to grow and they're they're um you know they, they need help hiring so they don't really have an internal team to do that hmm. uh, or if they do and they're they're a little bit larger we augment those teams um and supply them with talent from sourcing or uh, take a, a section of, of some of their jobs that tend to be more difficult. Wonderful. <laughs> um, and you said that uh, you didn't want to be the traditional model. So tell us a little bit more about that white glove service that you mentioned. What what, yeah. what makes you guys different and unique? Yeah, well, I, I think it's it's one of the 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 things for us, it's always about um we we I never wanted someone to feel like they represented a fee to one of our team members, you know. Yeah. Uh and, and that's kind of the fee per head model always made me feel that. Um yeah. when I was when I was recruited and 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 different things. And I wanted to take a different approach and and really be consultative and make sure that one of our one of our uh, guide posts uh, is to make sure that candidates know about our model and mm -hmm. know that we're not going to try to put you into something or convince you of something that you're not ready for right. the the next move in your career it's it's got to be right for you so mm -hmm. you know somebody's somebody's career is much much too important to have it based on a recruiter's fee and so that's why we wanted to yeah. Make sure we we de-emphasized, you know, it's kind of like um, <clears throat> you see some retailers that de-emphasize like, well, our salespeople aren't commissioned, you know, mm -hmm. that type of thing. And and uh, similar to that, but, um, you know, we just wanted to make sure it's very candidate centric. Yeah. Wonderful. David, share a story where someone pushed you or inspired you that you could do it, even though maybe you didn't think that you could and the impact that that person had. Hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, you know, I would say it's, um, uh, you know, that, that happens sometimes weekly. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. You know, right? <laughs> um, you know, I think it's, um, uh, man, that's a good question, Tim. I'll have to, let's come back to that okay. one. Okay, yeah. Okay. Fantastic. All right, what's your yeah. biggest learning as a business owner? Uh, you know, rely on others, mm. um, and, and develop others, you know? And so when you start off consulting, it's just you. And <clears throat> so it's a process of, of delegating, you yeah. know, and, and elevating yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. but in delegating, it's also coaching and teaching yeah. and, and helping others develop. 
Yeah. Um, you know, I think that's probably over the years back to the the previous question a little bit is that I've just had, I can't think of one necessarily person or point in time, but there's been people that I've um, reported to work for um, clients, you know, that have made us better, mm -hmm. you know, and sometimes it's, sometimes it's feedback that like, Hey, you don't really want, you know, it's not always pleasant to hear, but <laughs> right. It's it, right? It's very helpful. <laughs> yes. you know? And so you learn from mistakes or you learn from things that are working. Yeah. That's working. Okay. But you know, it could be better. So yes. we're always asking those questions too, of our clients, like sure. what could be better? How can we make this better for you and, and uh, make it easier? I, I liked your, um, your thought on the delegation. So, um, one of the exercises we have our clients go through is to evaluate right, what's your what's your dollar value to the organization, and it, it's a simple exercise. You just take your total company revenue and divide by two thousand hours, and and that's mm -hmm. your hourly value to the company. And then anything less than that, you should be exploring delegating or outsourcing. Yeah. Now, now you don't always delegate or outsource, but the the aha moment comes of wow. Right. If my value to the company is $500 an hour and I'm doing a whole lot of $25 an hour jobs, it's probably yeah. lopsided, right? There's probably right. more that I could be doing to help my company grow mm -hmm. if I was to let go of some of those things. And and I also, you, you mentioned the then you have to train. So yeah, we can't just mm -hmm. dump onto our employees, but we have to make sure that they know how to do the things that, that maybe are only in our head, right? That we've right, become right. so used to doing it that sometimes it's hard to teach someone how to do it because it's so natural for us <laughs> yeah well and that's that's probably a good exercise too for for clients right uh just to think okay what are they doing that we could help them with and maybe mm -hmm. that's maybe that's sourcing building a pipeline kind yes. of nurturing a pipeline of candidates along the way um, yeah. that takes a lot of time it's not necessarily hard work um the, the finding and the sourcing a little bit is is kind of like detective work sometimes online you know right. so uh that takes takes some skills but you know anybody can learn that and if they have interest and a passion for it they can be really good at it but that, that sometimes the that's those are things that we see that clients are trying to do or or the recruiting teams are trying to do that they don't have the time for yes. or yeah they have too much on their plate too many open requisitions that you know, yeah, that's a, that's a good, really good way to think about it. Yeah, and I often um, we we all probably hear the well, that's you know that's expensive or that's too much. It's like well, but it's the opportunity cost, right? Like right. you can yeah. do it yourself and take ten hours, or you could outsource it to somebody who that's all they do and it takes two hours. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. David, we know that business success doesn't happen in isolation, so. Tell us about one of your biggest challenges during the years and, and maybe a fellow business owner that came alongside you and helped you through that. Yeah, um, you know, I think it's, um, uh, you know, it's one of the challenges in, in starting um, Field of Talent was, was you know, just, uh, just getting up and running and um, like, you know, thinking about brand, thinking about the name, like, you know, just, just things that, are for me were really important. I, I, I think you know, like brand is is really important to me. And and some some business coaches and people just say, ah, oh, just you know, start, you know, start a <laughs> start a name and go with it. Right. So I, I put a lot of um effort and thought into that. Uh had some really good advice from, from a friend that a guy that I helped get a job years ago with a client and uh reached out to him and so, and he's he's a, a marketing director for for a, a large uh, services company here in town, and uh, reached out to him and said, "Hey, uh, Amos, what do you think? You know, give me some give me some insight." And he was more than gracious and and gave me a lot of things to think about, a lot of great referrals, um, and and really helped me kind of get started. You know, so that's. I think that's the hardest part for a lot of people is like, where do you start, you yeah. know, and, and uh, how do you start? Um, what are some things you really need to think about to set yourself up for success that you don't have to fix later? You know? 
Awesome. Um, so I know there's a little bit of a story behind your company name. So share that with us. Why Field of Talent? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I, I grew up in that we my friends used to joke that, you know, lived a little bit more suburban. Right. That They would say you grew up like in the middle of a cornfield, you know, <laughs> and, and that's in Indiana. That's, that's really a lot, the reality for a lot of us. And uh, and that was that was me. And that's kind of where I live today. I live purposely. I, I married a, a girl I went to high school with and, and, you know, we were both uh, of the opinion, like, Hey, we're getting out of here, the small town, <laughs> you know, we're all, we're going to go, you know, this was, this was college years. And as we got a little bit older, um, we settled here in Indi Indianapolis area. And then, you know, her, she grew up on some land and beautiful land, um, wooded and fields and just, you know, very bucolic and pastoral, loved it. That's kind of what I'm, what we've both been used to. Yeah. And, and as we look out and, and, you know, I think of field of talent, I think of, of our approach. Um, it's, it's holistic, it's nurturing, it's, it's caring um, and it's effective and it's, it's really high, you know, value driven. Um, it, it, it rings true of a lot of rural America. Mm -hmm. So exactly. uh, that's, that's really a lot of where it came from. And then, you know, the, the sports theme too. I, I love I love sports and always been an athlete and yeah. still try to be. I, I love the the intentionality that you put into the name and and into your business. I, yes, you're right. Some people will say just just slap a name out there. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter. Who cares? But it 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 truly does matter. And and especially the industry that you're in, right? We've all had situations where we've hired the wrong people. Right. And, you know, we didn't have they didn't have a cultural fit. And then it's like, oh, my goodness, right? this is, was a big mistake and everybody's miserable. So having that intentionality of, you know, the, the higher, slow, fire, fast idea. Right. The, so right. Yeah. You know, coming up with the right company name and the vision for the company and the culture of the company is huge in terms of long term success, because mm -hmm. through the, the valleys, right, the, the challenging times of the business, the being able to look back and go, okay, why are we doing what we do? And it's like, well, here's our vision, right? Here's the, here's our core values and our beliefs. And this is what holds us together. And this is our rallying call of why we all show up every day. So yeah, I would say that, you know, yes, there's advice, people that would advise just jump in and go, but I, I like your approach because those things are critical to the long-term sustainability and health of a, of a business. So congrats yeah. on taking the time to figure that out. Well, thanks. So, I mean, you know, I mean, it comes from leading human resources and, and, you know, leading talent acquisition for a number of years. And that, um, you know, I just saw that as, as, you know, people that joined, that stayed, felt connected to who we were. Right. And so we, you know, just when it was just like three of us, we spent, you know, uh, half a day, just, just digging into like, okay, who are we, who do we want to be? What are our values? Um, let's define those and something we revisit quarterly on our values. Um, mm -hmm. and we, we, and annually as well, to make sure that, Hey, is this still, does this still ring true? You know, are we living them? You know, mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah. In our Monday huddles, we go around, I'll, I'll read one of our values and then I start and then everybody follows of I'll share how I feel I'm doing against that. So here are the areas I think I'm strong. Right? Here are the areas I, I believe I, I can work on and will be focusing on improving. And, and so that's how we keep it live is, is yeah. really we're, we're visiting each of you know one of our values. Well, we're going to do that today, actually. So thanks for it's been on my mind lately to do that in our level 10s uh, weekly. And so, yeah. So thanks. Let's, I'm going to yeah. add that to our, to our uh, issues list. We're awesome. going to cover that. Hey, David, I'm going to put you on the spot here. If, uh, yeah. if I was to ask you to pick three people in your business owner journey that you're most grateful for them being um, there for you and, and helping with the growth. Who are those three people and how they help you? Yeah. Uh, well, you know, number one, my wife, I think, I mean, you know, she's, she's tremendous, uh, very supportive. Uh, you know, when you start out, that's, you, you got to have <laughs> Indeed, great yeah. support at home. And, uh, and you what's know, your I wife's mean, name? Libby. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, so, uh, she's been tremendous and, um, she's, she's number one. I think, uh, you know, there are others along the way, um, 
people I've worked for, I would say uh, uh, a guy named Howard uh, with, a, with a partner that we have has been influential and, uh, and a good, uh, good mentor and a good sounding board. He's led services companies very successfully and very successful uh, uh, over the over a, a long period. So, you know, having people that have been, you know, where you want to go, mm-hmm. that's really key. So those are a couple. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Um, you know, the, the gentleman I mentioned earlier, just getting getting started and getting that initial like, yeah, I think I'm on to something. Um, uh, with with my friend Amos, so and that was that was uh, really really key. Wonderful. Hey, let's talk about the future a little bit. So as you think yeah. about the next three to five years, what are the biggest challenges that you see that you're going to face in getting to your goals, and who are the types of folks that you're going to need to help you solve those mm-hmm. challenges? Yeah, I think um, you know I, there's there's a lot of change uh, mm-hmm. every day, a lot of change coming in uh, recruitment and business in general. Uh, we're seeing a lot with AI and and a lot of talk around that. How does that how does that play out? Um, I think making sure that we're always on top of our technology stack that it's working well for us that we optimize it. We're we're optimizing our use of it mm-hmm. uh, is is a continual thing that we talk about and it's on our mind. Um, it's a differentiator for us, and we want to make sure it continues to be a differentiator for us. Mm-hmm. At some point, maybe we we pivot a little bit and, and move into some product development or something like that. But for now, it's about making uh, processes repeatable, predictable, or making our business model very predictable. We spent a lot of time on that last year, and I think we've we've gotten to that and gotten to, you know, some we're starting to see some metrics that that make sense and that we can you know use and and reuse and predicting outcomes for you know time to fill, time to hire. Um, and uh, pipeline, you know, what, what we need to have going into the top of the funnel for candidates to, to have the right people coming out the bottom. Wonderful. Fantastic. And who, who are the types of people that you're going to need to help you with that? Yeah, I think uh, people that are, you, you know, we've, we've taken an approach that um, uh, recruitment and is, is a practice that can be taught and, <clears throat> there are a lot of people that that want to break into this, and so that's the approach that we've taken. Mm-hmm. We've we've taught a lot of people how to do this, um, or, or a few people anyway. We, we plan to teach a lot of people, <laughs> um, and then along the way, I think too, it'll it you know we'll we'll need to hire some some other folks that have you know a lot of industry experience as we grow mm-hmm. uh, that can help us maybe lead practices, but. You know, so far we've we've been successful with with uh, teaching and and training up people, and and that's not easy. It takes a lot of time. Sure. It's taken a lot of my time, you know, but it's it's very worth it, very rewarding. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Hey, last question here, David. Jim Rohn, awesome business guru, says that we become the average of the five people that we spend the most time with. So, as you think about that quote, what advice would you have for business owners who are doing it on their own and don't think that mm-hmm. it it uh, would be helpful to ask others for help. Yeah, make make friends. Ask ask for help. You know, um, swallow whatever pride you have. You know, <laughs> just 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 be. So one of the things that we three things that we look for when we hire um, from a from a character standpoint, um, we look for people who are hungry, humble, and smart. Mm. That's a Lencioni thing. Right. So, um, but that's, that's really, you know, I think people that are, are hungry, want to learn, they're teachable, they're humble. So, so that, that plays in as well. They're willing to own mistakes and, and improve and, uh, and, they're, and they're smart and they have a capacity to do it. Yeah. Uh, so, so they're, that's, that's worked pretty well for us so far. Um, I, that's the advice I would say is just, you know, continue to make friends, network, um, admit your weaknesses. Mm. You know, I mean, man, I've got them. You know? <laughs> and, and uh, you know, so I, I'm trying to always trying to look to see who can help me, um, you know, shore those up mm-hmm. so that I can focus where I'm strong. <clears throat> 
one of the things I hear uh, from uh, those business owners who are reluctant to ask for help is, hey, that person I want to talk to is really successful. They're really busy. Right? They're, they're not going to have time for me. How would you react to that? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> yeah, I would say uh, <clears throat> try to, tr yeah, I always try to get a warm introduction, right? Uh, you come in cold and, and sometimes it's, it's not, you know, going to be all that effective, yeah. <laughs> but, um, uh, just, um, you know, if I had to say something to my younger self, it mm -hmm. would, it would be like, lose the fear, you know, like just, just be fearless. Yeah. Don't make mistakes, you know, mess it up. Yeah. Learn from it. You know? <laughs> better. Yes. Right. So I think so many of us, um, just doubt ourselves and, mm -hmm. and I, you know, I did for a lot of years. Yeah. And so I think that's that's really key is to say, um, look, here's where I want to go. Be intentional about you know your plan, your goals, and share that openly. Mm -hmm. And you know I think there are a lot of people out there who've been very successful who would love to have someone who's hungry, humble, and smart, and teach you know teachable and and, and provide some advice at least to. Um, and if you can get a just a a nugget of advice um maybe that's the thing that that launches you forward yes and not may not become a mentor of yours but you know you've they they remember you you've, they're part of your network yes <laughs> so i'm an introvert by by nature um networking is not natural for mm -hmm. me um but um <laughs> pardon me and i don't think it is for most people but um, when you take the stance of, I'm not here for myself, I'm here to help someone else. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so for me, in building a business so far has been about how, how do I help the people that work for us? Right. How do I help our clients? Yeah. And that, there's no pressure on me and me trying to be something. Mm. Um, you know, it's about being altruistic for for others and for other organizations and so I, I when i do that, that i can talk to anybody right yeah i i loved your <laughs> you said about being fearless i i can't think of one person i've reached out to to ask if they'd be willing to you know have coffee and share stories yeah. that, hasn't, that said no they right. may say hey not this month because i'm really busy but you know let's try to get something on the calendars next month but yeah everyone i've talked to has said hey yeah, yeah i'd be willing to give you a few minutes and you know yeah. share stories and answer some questions and i mean it's almost it's I, when people have reached out to me it's it's honoring right They're, wow they yeah. they'd like to hear my story yeah of course i'm i'll give them some time so so we spend um it's something that is is a practice of ours i'll take a meeting at any time with anybody that's beginning a career search you know a new new job search right. um or maybe they just they just want some counsel some coaching right. they're thinking about making a change um that's an important you know the, these are important decisions in our lives right that, that affect a whole lot of people yeah. and so i'll always making time every week to just have those discussions and, yeah. and try to help someone network to the next person, to the next organization, uh, maybe some feedback on a resume. Yeah. So yeah, um, I I'll make, I always make time to do that. The other thing you said about being fearless is jump in and make mistakes and right. Learn through them. So here's yeah. the reality for everyone listening is, you know, we all prefer our comfort zone, right? We've been evolutionarily, we've been programmed to stay in the cave because if we step yeah. out of the cave, the lion eats us or the bear attacks us. But here's the thing, everything we want in life and everything we want in our business is on the other side of our comfort zone. So the yeah. longer yeah. we delay, right, taking those risks and, and stepping outside of that, the longer we delay the successes that are awaiting us. So I love that, right? Make some mistakes, jump out, figure yeah. it out as you go, right? We're, we are going to make mistakes. It's inevitable. That's how we grow and learn, right? It's how we learned how to walk. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We uh, just had a discussion with a candidate yesterday that that accepted an offer uh, from one of our clients and and we we helped her through that, helped her think through it. And, and 
you know, it was something that she had been with the organization uh, for, you know, nine, 10, 11 years, something like that. And she was like, you know, I've been pretty comfortable here. This is, this seems stable. Yeah. Right. And so the fear is, is that I go to something that's maybe less stable or doesn't work out or, you know, just the fear of change in general. Um, but uh, for us, it wasn't about, you know, we were never trying to convince someone you know, for the next thing, um, you know, we provide the, the data, the facts, the opportunity for her, it was kind of helping her think and ask questions that she could ask herself mm. to get to that realization that, yeah. And, and, you know, by through the process and, and affirming at the end of our conversation yesterday that, yeah, I am ready to make a change because mm. I know that I need to do that in order to grow. Yeah. Wonderful. Yes. And there's another um, fun uh, saying that we're, we're either growing or we're dying. There's no status quo, <laughs> right? Right, <laughs> right. Exactly. So, you know, I, you know, I see that I'm, I'm, I still garden and, and uh, you know, love, love nature and being in the woods, being in the fields and in the garden. And you, and you know, you see that, right. That's nature. That's just the way it works. Yes, indeed. We, I do a vegetable garden every year and I don't know what happened to one of my tomato plants, but the poor little thing died. So <laughs> it's, oh, it's tomatoes sad. Are finicky. It's, right? it's sad yeah. to invest all that time into those <laughs> babies and it, one doesn't survive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's uh, tomatoes are finicky. There, there, there are a lot of uh, things that can go wrong there, but uh, so rewarding when they work out. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> David, it sounds like you've been blessed with some incredible people in, that have helped you along your journey. If they were all here on the show today, what would you want to say to them? Uh, just, you know, thanks. I mean, you know, gratitude is, is something that's on my mind and on my heart every day. Yeah. So fantastic. Uh, just, just thanks and continual praise. And, you know, thank you for the time, for the, for the energy, the advice, the belief. Yeah. Wonderful. David, it's been a pleasure speaking with you today. Thank you so much for you being too, on the Tim. show. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Awesome. To those who tuned in, uh, thanks for listening to the Self Made is a Myth <laughs> show with your host, Coach Tim Campbell. Be sure to help spread the movement by liking our show and posting about it on social media. And to join our movement, go to bemadtogether.com. All right, folks, that's a wrap. Make sure to pay it forward, and I'll see you all next time. Take care. <laughs>